Hello mortals. Before being destroyed in the Great Fire of London in 1666, the old St. Paul's Cathedral was the tallest building in the world at 150 meters. Being a peasant in that period, you would have probably been left speechless by its grandiose size. But today, visit any city and you will probably see several skyscrapers twice that size. However they all dwarf the biggest skyscraper ever envisioned, exceed 4000. It would have been 4 kilometers in height, almost half of Mount Everest, and could have hypothetically held 1 million inhabitants. Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Now let's zoom out of any man-made creations and look at Earth itself. It's a pretty average-sized rocky planet with a radius of 6,300 kilometers. Planets bigger than Earth and at most 10 times as massive are referred to as super-Earths. However the biggest discovered rocky planet, Toy 849b, had the mass comparable to almost three Neptunes, or 40 Earths. Normally that would guarantee that it is a gaseous planet, but it was not to be. Its lack of atmosphere means that it has a rocky composition, but because it doesn't even fit in the definition of a super-Earth, scientists proposed a new label for it, a mega-Earth. But if we want to find the biggest planet in general, we'd have to look at the gaseous worlds, as their gravity limits their size much less than their rocky counterparts. The biggest yet recorded gaseous giant is Trace 4b, with a diameter 80% larger than that of Jupiter, but slightly less massive. You might think that that's not very impressive for the holder for the biggest planet ever, but there's a reason for that. That size for a gaseous planet means it's at the border of turning into a star. Fun fact, Jupiter is so massive that it's not too far away from turning into a brown dwarf star, hence why it's sometimes referred to as a failed star. If it has been more massive, the solar system might have been a binary star system. But that would mean life would have probably never evolved and you'd never be alive to observe it. Nice that it never happened. I guess. And if the planet classification was pretty scarce, we have an entire zoo of stars. All the way from tiny neutron stars to ultramassive giants. The title for the largest known star is constantly changing due to more precise measurements. For some time, V.Y. Canis Majoris and the U.I. Scuti were thought to be in the top, but at the moment of the video, it is believed that the holder of this title is Stevenson 2-18, a red hypergiant that would engulf the orbit of Saturn if placed in the Sun's place. But early in the history of the universe, there might have existed a type of stars, much more massive than anything today, called quasi-stars, quasi meaning seemingly but not really. From the outside they looked like stupidly large stars, dwarfing even Stevenson 2-18, but at their center, instead of a nuclear fusion core, they had a black hole, which would power up the star from the infalling matter. But all of them are now long gone, consumed by the said black holes at their center. If you enjoy learning all about the universe or science in general, I can wholeheartedly recommend the space-related book summaries, in the form of Blinks, from our longtime sponsor, Blinkist. Recently, they added a new type of content called shortcasts. As the name suggests, it is a shortened version of podcasts which encompasses the key ideas of each episode in under 10 minutes. So now you can listen to the benefits of wasting time by actually saving time, how cool is that? Hurry up and grab the free one-week trial, and get the key ideas from thousands of non-fiction books, and now more recently podcasts, or listen to entire audiobooks if you can spare the time. The range of topics is huge, anywhere from science, entrepreneurship, politics, and literally anything else. The first 100 of you to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out, and you'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. The link is in the description below. And now back to black holes. You would need to compress Earth to just 2 centimeters to get one. Or if you want to replace the Sun with a similarly massed black hole, it would have a diameter of only 6 kilometers. And no, it wouldn't suck the entire solar system inside of it. Because the mass would remain unchanged, the solar system would continue orbiting it as if nothing happened. You'd probably just freeze to death, but it might be worth it if it meant taking a couple of photos of it up close. And knowing humans, we'd probably send something inside of it as entertainment during our last days. But replace the sun with the black hole from the center of the Milky Way, and the story ends much faster. 
but not even the supermassive black hole comes close to the current record holder, ton 618. Coming up with an astronomical 66 billion solar masses, it would not only engulf Earth, but the entire solar system, many many times over. Remember Stevenson, the biggest star currently recorded? Yap, not even close. Considering the universe is probably infinite in all directions, and that there is nothing limiting a black hole's growth, somewhere very well might be a gargantuan black hole which would put even ton 618 to shame. But even those would be dwarfed by their parent galaxies. If you traveled at the maximum allowed speed in the universe, the speed of light, it would take you around 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way. That many years ago, the Neanderthals lived their best life in Europe until the Homo sapiens came and ruined the party. But as with all things related to humans, our galaxy is painfully average in size. The biggest known galaxy is IC 1101, about 50 times bigger than the Milky Way and 2,000 times more massive. Compared to ours, which is a spiral galaxy, IC 1101 is an elliptical one, meaning it has a smooth, nearly featureless image. Because of its size, it couldn't have been otherwise. It would take you 4 million years to cross the galaxy at light speed, that's the period from when the first primates started walking on two legs till now. Now something else that looks like a black hole but is actually not, are the space voids. Because of the force of gravity, galaxies tend to cluster up, in, well, galaxy clusters. Following the gravitational model, it normally leaves behind regions with less galaxies, called voids. The biggest such region is called the Boots Void. With a diameter of 330 million light years, it is so empty that it only contains about 2,000 galaxies. According to astronomer Greg Aldering, the scale of the void is such that, if the Milky Way had been in the center of the Boots Void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s. And now finally to the largest structures in the universe, the galactic superclusters. The Milky Way, along with other 2,000 galaxies, all constitute the Virgo supercluster. It has an insane radius of 55 million light years. If Earth was on one end and we had a very powerful telescope on the other end, we could see the dinosaurs roaming the Earth. But the entirety of the Virgo supercluster seems to be moving at 600 kilometers per second in a specific direction. It was determined that this great attractor is actually the center of mass of an even larger structure, Laniakea supercluster, which contains around 100,000 galaxies, with a diameter of half a billion light years. And yet, there is something bigger in our observable universe. All welcome. The Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. The largest structure that we know of. At 10 billion light years in length, this group of superclusters even contradicts the cosmological principle, which states that at very large scales of up to 1.2 billion light years, the universe should be approximately equal everywhere. But this structure is eight times bigger than the cosmological limit. It is even apparently too big to have been formed since the time of the Big Bang, which was 13.8 billion years ago, considering the Great Wall's size. Some even cast doubt on the idea of the Big Bang itself because of this structure. But imagine this, there are around 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe, each with potentially billions of stars, so if you wanted to visit each star in the time frame from the Big Bang till now, you could only spend 4 ten thousandths of a second on each. And consider that a lot of these stars have planets which host life, some advanced enough potentially to have a culture as rich as ours. If there is one thing to be learned from this video, is that humanity is incredibly small, regardless of how much it thinks of itself.